You're listening to the Deep Dive with Jason Sarney, a Miami Dolphins podcast on the Fanatics Network. Hello, everybody. Jason Sarney here with the Fanatics Network, finmaniacs.com, for another edition of the Deep Dive. But this is going to be the first inaugural extra deep dive. You already see my guest. Former Miami Dolphin linebacker, Houston Texan linebacker, Moreland Greenwood. How you doing, Moreland? Good evening. Oh man, I'm doing great. And and once again, Jay, thanks for having me, brother. Anytime, of course, man. You do a terrific job just having a good time talking football, whether it be old school dolphin talk, which you did so much of on the fish tank a couple of months back. You gotta, you gotta mention our boys, Seth Levito, Jay McDuffie. And, uh, yeah. Preach, of course, you know, Sean Todd. So uh, a lot of fun old school stories from your time on the Dolphins. And what we're going to do now, being your linebacker, you have that in your, your your football DNA. And you had a lot of, you know, in high school and college, you learned a lot about this game. You were a student of the game because you really needed to learn as much as possible because people have heard from you before on both my show and some other of your appearances around Finn world that, you know, you were a soccer player, you came on over, you learned the game, you were a wrestler, and then there was a, a great story where they kind of hit you as a kicker on the roster, so uh, <laughs> you as a person who has been that student, you're going to help us out with a little X's and O's film study, am I right? You know, you're, you're absolutely right, and you know, one of the ways that I was able to get ahead of the game, I remember when I was in Syracuse, uh, and I was a redshirt freshman, and uh, I was call it developmental, right? Uh, they call it developmental because I really only played two years of, of football in, in high school. And after my first year, my junior year, that's when I got a scholarship. So they wanted to make sure that I was fully developed and I understand the play. So I used to pay attention and practice. And after practice, I used to just be watching back. And never in the history of the uh, Syracuse Orange, uh, Orange men at the time, uh, have they uh, have they had a developmental just like me, just standing back there, not doing scout team? I didn't do scout. I, I, my whole entire job was to just pay attention, and and I did that. And a lot of the guys were like, "What's Marlon doing back here?" Like, you know, he's just standing around. But I was paying attention. And Coach P used to come over to me and be like, "Marlon, make sure you're paying. Marlon, make sure you're paying attention. Make sure you're paying attention." And I was like, "Coach, I'm paying attention, Coach." And uh, I used to go up, after practice, I used to go up in, into the room and I used to watch the, the practice tape over and over and when we played the game, that traveled and everything. And you know what? They, most of the guys on the, on the team, Coach P knew, but most of the guys on the team, they didn't know how much I knew. But during the spring, during the spring game, the, the following year, you know, I, 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 was, the, I was the starter. You know, in the spring game, I had an interception. I made a lot of tackles and everything. And I stepped right in there like like I was playing. <laughs> you know, like I was, I was seasoned because of the preparation. And that's how I know how important preparation is. So, I, I, you know, I didn't want to go over on that, but I just wanted to let people know how much, I, I, how much time I spent in preparation in, in, the, in the game and how important that is. And about being a student of the game and, and uh, just understanding the ins and outs of it, that will make you a complete player. 100%. And, you know, you mentioned student of the game. Uh, and that's like the perfect phrase, not just for football. Really, if you're going to be a student of the game, it could be for football, it could be for baseball, basketball, tennis, golf, swimming, life, just anything like that. And you, you might not have been necessarily the guys over, uh, you know, in the carrier dome, like, hey, what's Moreland doing? Well, he's doing the mental prep. <laughs> You know, he's doing the, I'm not going to get out there unless here's right, regardless of what's on the body or what's on the, you know, the weight room. Yeah. But that's what I love about you, the mental work, the prep that you put in, and you show that daily with your work currently. And we'll touch on that. We'll go back to the football. But just let the audience know if they do not know already. And I love that background. If anyone can't make it out if they don't know, that MG52, the Mullen Greenwood Foundation, you do terrific work. So before we go into the tape, the X's and O's, Tell us a little bit about what your work is currently. Yeah. Uh, currently, you know, when I stopped playing in 2015, I established the Marlon Greenwood Foundation. Uh, we, we do free football camp for the kids. Obviously, we've been doing camp for over the years, back in my hometown, also here in Las Vegas as well. 
Unfortunately, we weren't able to do that this year because of the, the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, but in the future, we hope to recontinue, uh, to continue with doing, doing camps. And uh, what we try to do would be a leadership and mentorship program for socioeconomic disadvantaged youth and adolescents and provide the guidance and leadership and basically open up the kids' minds to all the possibilities there is for them for the future um, to reach their full potential. We're currently working on putting a, a facility in place here and, uh, and working with the um, uh, NFL Alumni Las Vegas chapter. Uh, we will be able to um, establish a facility to uh, be able to create a brick and mortar year round where the kids could come to and get that quality service, um, quality programs that we provide uh, for the youth to be able to enhance them physically, mentally, uh, also, uh, um, if they need to go to uh, learn about trade school, um, to tutoring and all that stuff, and all these things, I will expand upon more because I'm sure this is this is not the uh, last time we're gonna have <laughs> an interview here. But uh, but uh, definitely working on some good things. Currently working on a MG52 COVID-19 uh, uh, relief program. But now that they, they, they've made the decision to have the kids at home. We're going to want to provide uh, food for those families that are in need. Because most of the time, some of them, if you know, most of the families at home, they they really count on the the kids going to school because they the school provides food for them. So um, that's another issue that we we're, we're trying to help out anywhere we can in the community. So it's fantastic work. It's some of the best work that you can do. It's selfless work. It's hard work, and it's for children. And as a dad, your dad, it's just you know. Bravo to you. Let's talk about some football because we can talk about this all day, but we'll do it another time, of course. Yeah, so absolutely. what I did for all the folks that don't know, I sent Marlon over the week. Marlon's the prep preparation guy, you know, got his grades, great grades in school, both Freeport High School and Syracuse. So I sent him a couple of footage bits of two current Miami Dolphin linebackers. Sent him the footage of Andrew Van Ginkle. Obviously, linebacker, rookie year, he had a foot injury, came on the last couple of games, about six games, and really put together some great tape. Marlon's going to talk about him specifically. I think he kind of caught Marlon's eye as a former linebacker who played a number of different spots. Van Ginkle could, so we'll talk about Marlon on that. We also looked at a well-traveled linebacker, so to speak, Vince Beagle. You know, a couple of teams didn't work out for him, came on over in the trade from Ke uh, the Kiko Alonso deal from the Saints, and Beagle played like six different roles all over the field. So we'll talk about him to what we'll do more if you don't mind just hanging back for a sec uh oh, before we go back into the video I want to go to a couple of quick little housekeeping linebacker questions so to speak yeah. you've had an experience to play you know maybe a specific set <clears throat> in your day you hear four three three four base defense all of these different calls terminologies if you had two or three minutes because if you have the if you're using these terms when you're describing van ginkle or beagle just organically just use this opportunity, if you don't mind, to just let the audience know what they do not know already. What might the general differences or nuances of a 3-4, a 4-3, and just some of those fun linebacker calls that we hear on TV? My, well, who's the my? You know, stuff like that. <laughs> and by yeah. the way, before you do, that Coach P, great imitation, that was Coach Paul Pascaloni, another orange Syracuse Miami Dolphin connection. But if you have any other Coach uh, imitations, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> You're talking about Ed Ogeron, Ed Ogeron. <laughs> Ed Ogeron, Ed Ogeron. That's the nation. I, 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 well, <laughs> you know, um, he used to call me, uh, Ed Ogeron used to call me 52. You know, everywhere you see me, it'd be like, 52? What you doing over there, 52? Working hard? Hmm? <laughs> you know how you land, you used to always do that. I, I used to really... <laughs> Right, but I'm, I'm gonna explain this because it, it, we're doing an explanation, so I'm gonna do it. Uh, trying to make it clear so that so they don't get lost within the uh, <laughs> within the, the voiceover. Okay. <laughs> um, no, um, the definite. So I, I, I've played in a four three um, my most of my career in, in in the NFL. One year I played in the three four with my first year in Houston. So I was able to get a chance to understand how what the difference was uh the 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 three four that means that there are three down linemen and four linebackers now the two linebackers you see 
two guys with feet on the ends of each uh, when you're watching the game and you hear the talk, especially with the Pittsburgh Steelers and different other teams that play in the 3 4. Those guys are, aren't on um, defense, Ben. Those guys on the, the, the widest with those are linebackers. And uh, those guys inside them is defensive end, and the guy in the middle is a nose tackle. Um, and then you have the, the Mike linebacker and the Will linebacker, the two linebacker that's off, off about four yards off the ball. They normally call them the, the, uh, the Mike and the Will. Some of them call them the Mike and the J. It depends on what type of team you're on. Sometimes the terminology change, but but the the Mike normally line up to the strong side, which is where the tight end is. Um, so and the will linebacker uh, aligned to the weak side, away from the tight end. So Mike really mean for middle linebacker, uh, but in a four three in, in a three four, he's toward the tight end side. The will linebacker is away from the tight end, um, and and um, in, in a four three defense. Uh, there's four down linemen and three linebackers. Uh, Sam, Mike, and Will. Sam meaning for the strong side linebacker, which aligns to the tight end side. Mike linebacker is in the middle. Is the middle linebacker, and the and the Will linebacker is the weak side linebacker, which means away from the tight end side, not away from the re receiver strength, away from the 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 uh, tight end side. And one of the difference that me personally playing in a 4-3 and also in a 3-4, one of the things I couldn't stand is in a 3-4, you, the wheel linebacker, which is a position I played, always had to play off that nose tackle. If the play is going away, you have to kind of mirror him. If he gets reach, you got to play here. If it doesn't get reach, you got to play the front side gap. And it's like, coach, which gap do I got here, buddy? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, kind of like making him right here. So. So, and sometimes it kind of confuses the offense, especially if you have a good nose tackle. He can really dominate and make a lot of plays. Uh, but I really like the 4-3 because I just like when the gaps are defined. This is what you get. You got A gap, you got B gap, you got this, and you just play, you could just play fast. You know, there's no, there's no kind of, no indecisiveness, and that's what I enjoyed about the 4-3. Four, the four, so hopefully, you know, God was able to, um, define it a little bit, you know, Jay, if you have any more questions that you want to add to it, I can explain a little bit more. Uh, you did great. You covered the order on, and I was, you know, I didn't even have to ask you or beg you for it, so you're good there. And uh, what we could do, what I'll do is I'll maximize the uh, Andrew Van Ginkle one-minute kind of rundown. Uh, yeah. I did a little just analyst uh, analysis just from, you know, my own eyesight, just watching mm -hmm. him for the last couple of games. So I'll play this. I'll maximize it now. We'll hit play and uh, let's see what we got. Yeah. Miami's second year linebacker, Andrew Van Ginkle, is heading into 2020's training camp with last quarter of the season momentum after seeing action in six games. The earlier portions of the season had Van Ginkle out of action due to a foot injury, but once he saw the field, he made his presence felt with solid linebacking play in pressuring the passer as well as run support and help in pass coverage. He showed versatility and aggressive ball hawking tendencies and at six feet four inches is tall and lengthy and a formidable middle of the field defender who can move well laterally. The Wisconsin product was drafted in the fifth round, 151st overall in 2019's draft, and could challenge for a starting spot in a crowded linebacking group for the Miami Dolphins. Keep your eyes and ears out for Van Ginkle's progress throughout training camp as he could be a staple linebacker in Brian Flores' system. I, I really, I really enjoy watching that, you know, seeing, seeing, seeing Seeing him out there running around and 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 uh, just his quickness and speed, his uh, his effort, his hustle to the ball, and you can see that he he wants it, and and he, and he and he's getting after it. And another thing that you had mentioned, you mentioned that he had a foot injury. He had yeah. foot injury that kept him out. Well, my rookie year, uh, I was projected to be the starter. Um, coming in, picking up the defense real fast, and as soon as we started training camp, I was out with a midfoot sprain, mm -hmm. and I was on crutches for like, mm -hmm. I was on crutches for a month. Um, they couldn't find out what was wrong with my foot because it came to find out, we went to get the MRI, they couldn't 
find out what was wrong with me. So I went to get an x-ray after that and they found out that I had a sewing needle in my foot. Whoa, you did? My <laughs> wife had that happen to her. <laughs> How, what happened? Yeah. even know? <laughs> I didn't know because uh, in growing up in Jamaica, I, I walked barefoot on the ground. Oh. Uh, all these years, I have a sewing needle in my foot. I still have it in my foot. You were an <laughs> undefeated Nassau County wrestler with a <laughs> sewing needle in your foot? <laughs> I'll tell you. So when you what? when I heard that he, he had a foot injury, that just reminded me of my uh, rookie year and the things that I had to go through. And uh, and I remember it, it was it was it was it was a tough uh, uh, situation because I worked so hard to to get there, and and I was oh just about to God. get promoted, and then I got hurt. And but but then I just kept the faith. I just kept on praying. I kept on working hard. I kept on doing the the, the treatment. And um, I remember we were about to play. Um, New England. It was the third. It was the want to say the fourth game of the season. Um, at the year after they won the Super Bowl, okay. and I remember the coach Jim Bates called me called me up to the uh, up into the upstairs. And at the time, I was like, well, "Why are they calling me up here?" <laughs> you know, but I, I haven't. I missed the entire preseason, and you know, I started practicing again. But you know, I was moving around and just starting to get back. Back on track, and uh, I remember Coach Jim Basie said, Marlon, Marlon, um, we're going to start it this week. <laughs> I really wasn't expecting him to say that, but it, I, I had to keep a calm faith. I was like, okay, Coach. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and uh, he was like, you know, you were doing so well that uh, we would be, we, we, would, we would not be doing you a good deed by not playing you. Right. And uh, and they, and they said we didn't want to. We don't want to waste you. Uh, we want to make sure we put you out there and and see what you got. And and I was very happy, but at the same time I got real very nervous. I was like, man, I haven't I haven't tackled a guy in the NFL <laughs> since. Uh, and now I gotta go out there and perform now. So I remember that week of practice and preparation was so intense, and I was so focused. And then uh, we went out there. We beat New England. I had eight tackles. But this is this is what this is what Coach Bates did. He he told me that he was gonna blitz me on the first play. Oh, right off uh, the bat, like yeah. a home run hitter saying swing for the fences. Basically, don't think about anything. Just run run through the a gap as fast as, as, fast as possible. <laughs> and, and that's what I did. And uh, um, we uh, I blitzed and I made a tackle on the first play, and I was I was ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> that's was like, coaching. That's good yeah, coaching that's, right that's there. Really good coaching. And you know, the, I second, love that. the second time I saw saw that happen was when D'Amico Ryan, D'Amico Ryan's first year. Okay. In Houston, well, on the very first play, the coach called a blitz and he ran in there and he made a tackle. And I was like, you know what, this is the same thing. So it, I was like, it's probably something a coach do to get, get the rookies going, you know? Yeah. The on the first play. It's like so <laughs> simple. And mm -hmm. it's brilliant, but look what happened. And that's beautiful. And this segue is, you mentioned good coaching. Dolphins have a good coach, Brian yeah. Flores. I mean, good is, is a disservice. I mean, he's a fantastic coach. He's a leader, yeah. and he's young enough where he, he's, you know, he's got 30 years left him. You know, he's so young in his career. He's done so much already. He's a defensive mastermind. And yeah. if you've seen on we'll, – we'll get back to Van Ginkle specifically, mm -hmm. but – uh, he does this floor as he has this, you know, three, four or amoeba style defense or kind of, I heard a, a broadcaster call it spaghetti on a plate sometimes where it just, you know, everything's just kind of scattered and all of a sudden mm -hmm. the line, it's all over and then boom, they do their job. So yeah. did you pick any of that up in the Van Ginkle um, tapes or the raw footage specifically, or did anything stand out about his overall game? If you can give me a player comp that you played with or even such as yourself for getting Van, Van Ginkle's mm -hmm. game. What are your thoughts with? I know it's a loaded question there, but uh, no, no, definitely, definitely a loaded question. But but uh, I I was seeing who I could really could compare him to, um, just motorized because he he he's good at rushing the passer. Okay. Uh, he 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 never stops. He keeps on um, running to the ball. He has good technique and good feet and good good discipline. And even when he drops back in coverage. He breaks on the ball like he's playing linebacker. So it's it, it's like uh, I, I want to say it, it. You know, based on the the tape that I just seen, you know, the, um, 
he, he has all the different the attributes of a, of a very good player. Um, you could have some guys that are good at rushing the passer. You have some that are, that are not good, good at rushing passer, not good at dropping back in coverage. Him show that example of everything. And, and, and he is, he, one thing you cannot coach is, is guys running to the football that having that relentless effort to get to the just that hunger of just getting to the ball and you and you can see see that on every one of those plays and every single one of those plays after the, no matter where he is he's getting to the football and a lot of players don't understand how important that is all, all you have to do it doesn't matter if you didn't make the play if the player would run, just run to the football good things will happen you, you see it happened to him there uh, a lot of times when he was turning and running, then he ran and he, he ended up making that tackle. Right, yep, Cincinnati, yep. Yeah, and uh, uh, so, 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 so those are the things that good coaches implement, but players that, that embrace it are the ones that excel. One that, you know what, coach is right, I'm going to hustle to the bar. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to implement that into my practice. I'm going to do it each and every day. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to put that in my brain that, you know, it's not just practice, but it's, it's part of practice. And one of the things that uh, one of my coaches used to do is, if, if we ran and practice really hard, he wouldn't give us conditioning. Really? Yeah. He yeah. rewarded you. If you, if you run, um, but if you're not running, then he oh. starts implementing the conditioning. You know, so some guys, because it's practice, boom, they run, they run, they run. Whatever. Instead of a boom, boom, you know, you, you practice like you play. You know, so it's oh, hundred percent. To let into, you. but yeah, um, I really like it. I I, I I like what I see. You know, I, I like what I see. I don't see anything that I I use his hands pretty well. Um, when it when it's coming off the edge, um, I really enjoy the motor that he has. Mm -hmm. Just seems like he plays with an intense uh, motor. That is, he move always moving fast and. Uh, um, and that's kind of like how you have to be as a player. Every play, once the first play is over, you got to go back and you got to reset. You, you, I love that. <laughs> I mean, that's high praise. I mean, very high praise. Now, if we didn't discuss the foot injury, if you didn't have any preconceived uh, notions that he had that foot injury, any notice of it? Like, did, did, did he seem uh, slow? Did he seem... When, no, he didn't. You, you wouldn't have been able to tell. But uh, there's on one play, and it could could have been because... It could have been because he might have stepped a little way to come back inside, but there was one play when he was coming back in the tackle. I thought that he kind of, he kind of wasn't. But you would have to have a foot injury to be able to notice that. But that's what I'm that's saying. Not necessarily. <laughs> step out one, if you but go back to the tape, I can show you the one. And if you ever meet him and ask him, and if he said that, you know, uh, he was right. He said, no, really, I'd probably just tweak it a little bit. Right. Um, uh, but I can see, like, um, like, like for example, they're, they're my rookie year when, when, uh, when uh, I played in the last day, the, uh, my left ankle was spattered. And I remember I was coming off, and Jason Taylor, I was going to get the, the fumble recovery, and Jason picked it up, and Jason ran it, and I was running with Jason Taylor. And now when I see it, and I see, like, when I, when I jumped, it was such an awkward jump. Other people don't see it, but to me, I was like, oh. that's a weird looking kind of jump, you know? You know, yeah, you know, I was trying not to come down on my foot and it was kind of just a weird. You wish you could do that jump again, <laughs> you know, but that seems like a good story anyway. And, uh, and, 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 but, but that's the thing that when you talk about people seeing it on tape, they don't know what's going on with you and, and everything like that. So, but, uh, but yeah, but, um, um, Really good player, and I think he's going to do well. I think he's going to do no. all he's going to do is stay, continue doing the thing that he's doing. Obviously, he was hungry because he was hurt, so he, he had something to prove. So right. all he has to do is add upon that and take that same hunger that he had to 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 give him that drive to play like that on the field and utilize it in the off season to get better, to 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 get in the training room to make sure he he get all the, the different type of. Uh, rehabilitation that he can get and put into the body because one of the thing is one of the things is a lot of players don't understand that their their body is their business. Oh yeah. And and so 
in the off season is the time for him to get all of those things, um, whether it's massage and you know, um, spend you know, spend the money on 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 your body, healing your body, making sure your muscle recover. All these different nicks and necks that you have. Um, that's something I didn't take advantage of. You know, I wish I would have. Um, you know, do more massages, and you know, I always felt, felt like I was pampering myself, but <laughs> but but it really, you know, I should have went to go get a massage. A couple more massages. Get, get there, get get them to massage the the, the tissues and the stuff tissue like that. Stuff? Yeah. And I did physical therapy in in college, so I should have known better um, that I needed that. But sometimes you 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 have that you know that that mentality where sometimes you feel like you're okay, you're going to be okay, but, but I feel like that could have helped me more. And where I learned more about it is when I, when I trained at uh, Bomberita Performance Systems, the, that's down there in Florida. How about that? I did everything, you know, from lifting, massage, chiropractor, um, the nutrition. Full service. Yeah. Full service. I was like, man, how come I only found out about this when I became a free agent? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, was, in I was like, I would have been coming here all this time, uh, you know. Uh, but, but uh, you know, you know, everything, everything happened. Everything happened according to the time. But yeah, um, there. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm excited about him. He was a fifth round linebacker. You know, not necessarily a comparison physically, like. Zach Thomas, who was a fifth-round linebacker, completely different in size. And I think the only comparison I could see is that motor. But I don't even think it's close to Zach's motor. No one had a motor as close to Zach. But yeah. that's my fifth-round linebacker. When I think fifth-round linebacker, that's who I think of. But I would think that's a really good comparison because as soon as you said fifth-round, I was about to say Zach Thomas. That's, that it goes with you. You know, it's it, like fifth-round it, Zach Thomas. Yeah, uh, he was drafted in the fifth round. Back yeah. to in the middle linebacker position, so he would. But but as far as the motor, the motor, it's the same. You know, it, it's definitely the same. Back was flying all, all over the field. He was like, you, you would have to. I would have to elevate my game, and that's what made me better. Was because if I wasn't uh, going to blow up the plays and stuff, back was running into me every time. <laughs> Completely, he was like pushing me along. And I remember, like, it wasn't until, like, my third and four, fourth year when with the Dolphins when I really was getting off the spot, like Coach Gervasio, so I was saying, I was reading really fast. And, and, and uh, so having those players around me really elevated me. Um, having Junior, uh, I say around me, Jason Taylor, having playing with those guys, Timbo, uh, Daryl Gardner, you know, um, Adewale Agunde, Patrick Satane, Sam Madison. You know, having all those players brought Mary. You just um, name like that's like my that's my defense. Like you just name like my defense. <laughs> yeah, like right. if anyone's messing with my team, it's like that's my defense. Like that yep. that was the years, man. But man, awesome stuff on that. Hey, you know what's funny? You never realize how good of a team you're on until they go on another team. Be like, you know what? We had a man, a monster defense, man. Man, those guys were like, yeah, like, like, like. like uh, and, and, and you know what? It's it, it was amazing. I was happy to have experienced that because that that made me a better player and and uh, and and helped me to get to the, the position where I got to when I went to Houston and I was well, was over there playing and, and stuff and that elevated my game as well. So awesome! Uh, yeah, Miami man, Miami. We're very thankful. Yeah, you got to all be thankful of the team that got you right in, that brought you in. So. That's why I always have all the respect and you know, always all the love for Miami. And plus, it's close to Jamaica. You know, it's like an hour away from Jamaica. <laughs> it's just a quick boat ride. Yeah, it's a quick Hop yeah. on a boat. You know, all the have a boat. You know, and, and I got family that lives down there. I didn't really want to leave Miami, but you know, it's a business. Uh, of course. But uh, yeah, you ended but, up in Vegas. So, you know, it's, yeah. not, not, not the worst uh, moving situation, but. Uh, so here we go with some uh, quick little highlights here for Vince Beagle. Miami Dolphins' fourth-year linebacker, Vince Beagle, out of Wisconsin, is entering his second season with the Dolphins after being acquired last year from New Orleans as part of the Kiko Alonso 
trade. An immediate impact player for the Dolphins, as well as an instant fan favorite, Beagle made his presence felt immediately, got in on sacks, and roamed numerous areas of the field while making himself a key player in the Miami Dolphins' defense. He finished the season with 59 total tackles, two and a half sacks, seven tackles for loss, an interception, and 13 quarterback hits. Beagle has that component that is key for Coach Brian Flores and his defense, that being flexibility. Beagle can play outside and show he could be very productive on the inside as well, as Flores uses a number of specialty formations and schemes in what was a spaghetti on a plate or amoeba-style defense. Keep an eye on Vince Beagle to continue his production in 2020. You are another... back. What do you think of Beagle, Marlon? You are another first thing I, I thought about when I saw him playing. Let's hear it. He he reminded me of uh, of uh, John Lynch. Wow! <laughs> as far as safety, John Lynch. Of yeah, safety, John Lynch is is the way. Uh, um, well, first of all, the number the four to seven, right? Okay. You also have the four to seven, but at the same time. Um, uh, is it? He is. He, he he doesn't have the fast twitch muscle. Uh, the the speed and explosiveness, like uh, what is it? Van Kingo. Yeah, Van Kingo. You got it. Yeah. Um, but when he he may not be like boom boom boom, but he he moves and plays right, and he's definitely a playmaker. Uh, he definitely doesn't doesn't uh, stop uh, moving his feet. Um, but I know if both of those guys were were in the race, I, I would have my uh, money on <laughs> Van Kingo that he would be he he would win the race. But I would have both of them on the field because it's not about how fast you run the forty forty, and it's how much plays you make. And uh, he's definitely a playmaker. He's instinctive. Um, I, I like that about him. Um, he he um, has good good positioning and he makes good instincts and he makes and, and he makes plays. So uh, it looks like you know um, I think he has a bright bright future there. W which other position have he played? I mean, why did you say that? He was just roaming all over the field. He oh. was inside. He was outside. He had just like I guess a couple of different like assignments or on third down, first down. He was just all over the place. And which is really up. good for him. Yeah, which is really which is really good for him because he's a he's a guy that has have a lot of instincts. You know, yeah. um, it, it's like he you saw the one time he was being double team and all he did was kept his full feet moving and both those guys had to go on to block different guys and he freed them up and he made the they, they, they are sack. He had the interception over there. Um, he's another guy that keeps on running to the football because if you can see his ability. Also, he had, like I go back to the instincts, you know, a lot of times, a lot of players don't have any idea of when the um, running back is past them. You know, some of them is get to get too tied up on the block, but they're the, they're the players that look through the block play off the block, being able to see a lot of times when the running back broke, broke past and they retract, you know, they retract. Disengage the play, from the block, not give up on the play. play. Yeah, and you just go to make the play. And that's, a, that's something where some guys would get caught up on the, on the block all day and, and not, being a, not being a factor. Um, so both of those guys have, um, have good motives just based on, on what I say. I would, uh, I would think that, uh, um, in, in a in a race, <laughs> I would like to see those two guys race and see who would win. Yeah, you know, a lot but, of Dolphin uh, fans are looking at like <laughs> receivers or a running back race. It's like you got Jakeem Grant who runs like a four three two forty and like uh -huh. his running back Matt Breida. But but we're gonna go with a, a sub card. That's not the main event. We're gonna go with Van Ginkle <laughs> versus Vince Beagle in a yeah. forty yard sprint. I, I would pay to see that. That would be great. I would, I would love to see that. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna look up to see. Who what they're for the time. We got to try to you see know, if we can make that happen. Oh, uh, yeah? I mean, we got to see if we can literally make, like, winner take all, a fun little charitable Van Ginkle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. four people watching from the sidelines. I mean, that, <laughs> that's not must-see TV, Moreland, but I'll watch it. 
No, nah, he's definitely, but but I'm telling you, both of those guys are quality players, and um, 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 I know that they they have a bright bright future ahead of them, and uh, they just gotta continue to play and continue to play well. And uh, I, um, for the sake of the, the for the sake of the Dolphins, you know, I think the defense continue to play the the way they play. Um, the, the quarterback that was drafted from from uh, Alabama tour. Yep. tour um, um, I think I always thought that he was a really good player at Alabama. I remember when I first saw him in the national championship game when he came oh, in, yeah. and I thought, well, you know, what? it's gonna, it's not gonna end well. And he went in there. <laughs> I was like, woo! Yeah, like the like, whole world is put on notice. Man, this guy is good. Um, so I'm really glad he's there. I, I pray that he stays healthy. I pray that um, that that he come back to um, a 100 percent and that he has a long career in Miami and really bring back Miami to where it needs to be and to um, to where hopefully they can break the 72 Dolphins record of having be the only team to be undefeated twice. <laughs> From your mouth to the Lord's ears, Marlon. Absolutely. Well, we need we need that 2003, 2002 defense, you know. Yeah. To mix with you know Tua and this offense, obviously this that would just. Well, Tua and the offense and Ricky Williams that running back when oh, he's on. You're, you're killing me! Stop it! You're killing me. We need Ricky Williams that year before when he, when he ran through everybody before he disappeared. We, we need we, we need him. I know you do a pretty good Dave Wanstead too. I mean, we're having too much fun. I gotta ask you to do it. Not, you know, we we need Ricky. Rick, Rick, hey, 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 uh, Ricky, react. All right, well, uh, Rick is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yes. But hey, to Coach Wanstead's credit, and this was on the fish that got the whole Ricky, the running, 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 and they reconciled. They were talking. They were like friends. Supposedly, I love that story that you know Ricky yeah. said, and they're all good. And mm -hmm. oh man, See, this, no, is Ricky, uh, this is the Dolphins. This is a story. That it's great, yeah. and I love it. Yeah, and man. It's, it's, well, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's it's great. It's wonderful. You know, I, I uh, enjoy playing playing in Miami. Those are some of my Memorable moments, you know, playing there. I remember uh, even being in the locker room, uh, Seth Levitt out with Patrick Sitting, the rapping, all the other stuff. Um, the video, they playing in my video at halftime, uh, <laughs> blow the talent out of, out, out of proportion. And we, we, we're playing New England too and beating New England. And to Bucky Jones is uh, coming down and was like, Marlon, is that you up there? Uh, <laughs> I'm the jumping track from New England. And I said, yeah, he was like, you know, I was thinking that with you. I was out there in the field, so he's out there in the field wondering if that was me. I wonder if that's the reason why we won. <laughs> all mind game, man. All part of the mind games. But you mentioned yeah. that. You know, hey, anytime you want to have that rap battle 2.0, I'm not going to not say <laughs> it's the platform that we can make that happen. But uh, uh, Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, anytime. You know. Uh, you, well, I know you'll go anytime. It's uh, huh? it's the 23 that uh, we'll have to see if he wants to take that invite. But uh, oh. we'll have to see if you know, he's a uh, he's, He's coaching. I, I know. You know that he, he's coaching and winning a lot of games and doing a great job over there. Uh, I already won a couple of few state championships down there. Or one, uh, yeah, he's rocking and rolling. Rocking rock and rolling. And, uh, we're going to see another one, another Pat Sertan coming up. He has two. Oh, Alabama. yeah, that's right. At either Alabama, right? Uh, yeah, and I hope yeah. that he's going right to the same place as Dad played. And I'm not talking about Kansas City. So let's see if he can be <laughs> another. Uh, Another member yeah. of the Miami Dolphins backfield one of these days, but yeah, yeah Pat, that'd be awesome. That that would be that that would be awesome, and he'll be Pat right Pat. at home. He'll be right at home with 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 family and everything. That that would be a great that would be a great uh, pick for him and a place for him to end up. You know, and that's another thing. Um, when when and when a when a player get drafted, I, I always I always um, think back. What would be the best thing for a player? Now, the parents that have been with them. For a long time, um, I've helped them to to get to the position they are when they get drafted. I really think if they're drafted in a good position and they could really afford it, they should move their parents down to them, close to them, especially in the first couple of years, so they can so the parents could help them with the decision making process of uh, of kind of weeding out all the 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 
the people that are trying to, the, the hangers on, the people that are trying to come in there and the takers. So I want to try to come there and, uh, uh, and kind of ruin their, their career before it even gets started. Well, well said, well put. Yeah, but, but the parents, they've been on the career for a long time and they, they want to see what's best for their, their, their child and they can notice those things because they, he's going to, they, they, when, once the first get drafted, you're going to be so, so um, focused on making the team mm -hmm. and who you're tackling and making sure that you don't make a mistake that all these other opportunities that come up, sometimes you, you won't have enough adequate time to make a, a, a quality decision because you don't have the time to do the proper research, you know, and because you're too busy working up, lifting weights, um, trying to be the best you can be on the football field. Uh, so, but, but yeah, but so when you mentioned, when you mentioned that, that just came into my mind that it would be great for him to go down to, to Miami. Oh, of course. Have the, have the family support, to have, you know, have that guidance and that direction there. And uh, that's one of the big things we are with, with, with the foundation is to be able to give kids the proper guidance and direction and put them on the right path, you know, um, put them on the right path in life. And, and it's so extremely that, important. Yeah, work with and, you know, everything you do with the foundation and, you know, you'll have obviously, you know, I want you to say a couple more, you know, things about what you're doing, what's up, you know, and just uh, obviously just tons of appreciation to you, Marlon, for coming on again. You know, obviously yeah. I'm going to take you up on the, the additional interview or just hangout session. We'll call, let's call it a chat to talk. Yeah. You know, you've been such an enjoyable person to just call a friend and I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So, what else can you tell the folks out there? Is there anything you're really up to, whether it be the Las Vegas chapter or MG52? Well, you know, just the, the, the main thing, uh, you know, we're currently working on doing that uh, MG52 COVID-19 relief uh, program uh, to provide food for the kids there in need at B Delta Academy, which is one of the first schools that I started uh, uh, mentorship at when, when I came here. And then I wanted to build up on that and now now I'm the uh, I'm now I'm the president of the board there at uh, the D Delta Academy, and um, um, the the program has been in existence for about 11 years. And, um, they just do a tremendous job. As a matter of fact, with this whole COVID-19 situation, um, they have already been doing most of some of their program was already online program, and some uh, some of them the kids that show up at school uh, in online and in person. But because they had so much uh, experience with it, um, when when it came to COVID, they had such a easy transition to to the online program. So they weren't when everybody else was scrambling trying to figure out what they're going to do with school and stuff. There are they, they had it all already figured out. So their kids their kids didn't even miss one beat. So I really yeah man, uh, really good school. And there's a lot of other good good schools out here in Vegas. Um, that we're just trying to enhance the community, the education uh, portion of it, and to try to do our part here within the community. Yeah. Doing great. It's mg52.org. And, you know, everyone, yeah. if you have a couple of dollars, you could do just, you know, give a little bit. You know where it's going to. It's going to the kids. It's going to COVID relief. It's going to the education. That's the future, you know. So, yeah. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. It's going to the future. And ultimately, we're going to um, be putting a facility in place that's going to be able to be year-round, that's going to be able to, to uh, provide these programs for the kids. I'm talking after-school program, football, basketball, um, soccer, um, volleyball. I'm talking uh, um, um, provide food for them, mentorship, um, trade school, uh, all these different things to make them reach, be able to reach their full potential. And all those programs are going to be provided free for the kids. Uh, and we, 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 we're working that out. And once we have the final detail, we'll be able to, to um, ex, ex, explain more about it. But, you know, that's really my goal, you know, because a lot of kids, I see how important my father was to me coming from Jamaica, telling me to be the best in everything that I do. And, um, and that's what I went on, did get, you know, focus on the education. I did that with an honor roll, high honor roll. Then I was fortunate to have my gym teacher that got me into wrestling. And then he saw how fast I picked up wrestling and he got me into, into football. So he saw something in me that I didn't recognize in myself, you know, and that's what a mentor does. That to see a player, it's kind of like a coach, a good coach. To see a player and be like, you know, 
he, he doesn't look like he's going to be a linebacker, but he would be a heck of a defense for them. Or he, his position might be tight end, or you know, you know, uh, you know, or whatever. But you have coaches that have been around a while that can be able to help, and they really affect your life in a, in a positive way. And that's what gave me opportunity to get a scholarship, be able to uh, get an education, and then be able to play in the NFL. And then when I found with the Texans, finally being able to help my family, you know, my seven brothers and four sisters. So I'm very appreciative of that. And I want to be able to have another youth have the same type of uh, experience, the same type of journey, and to uh, be able to, to reach their full potential. Yeah, so. Really nothing better than someone realizing and working to get a dream. Mm -hmm. capturing it and then helping others do the same and even just helping this with life and especially in this time i just hope everything is happy and healthy on your end and on your family's okay. end definitely definitely you can't thank you enough my friend yeah. <laughs> yeah you're very welcome brother and uh the hope is to uh this is the last thing but the hope is to to once you do that is to let the other uh, uh the kids coming up once they get to a, a level of success and they come back and they do the same thing for the for the next generation and the next generation what it's and about and just to be able to to make the world a better place ultimately so uh, it's made the world a better place one community at a time uh, ultimately so. from ultimate that's <laughs> you, know. you know it's ultimate yeah. <laughs> you got it yeah. That's it. That's how we yeah. do it. But <laughs> Boyle and Greenwood, MG52, have a terrific Sunday evening. We'll air this on Wednesday. <laughs> Total appreciation, my man. Have a great one and be well. All right. You too, brother. Thank you.